Praise the Lord today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, saints. All the saints of the Most High say amen and praise God. Hallelujah. I ask you today, tonight, whenever you're watching this video, do you really, truly believe what the Scripture says? What the Scripture is teaching to God's people? What it reveals to us? Do you truly believe it? And that is a question that we all must ask. Because there are so many things that the scripture communicates to the body of Christ today. The revelation of God, from God, through man, by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the inspiration of the Almighty God Himself. The Holy Scripture is God's thought it's God's mind and the principles laid down in the Holy Scriptures are eternal eternal principles that we are to live by of all the people in the scriptures everyone that's mentioned in there there's for for good or for evil there's a principle okay there's something in the lives of everyone in the scripture that, that can be found today on the earth in the lives of the people walking the earth. And the scriptures say so many things and talk about so many things, you know. Uh, this whole thing about the rapture of the church and Comet Elenin, which has basically been obliterated by the sun because <laughs> it was such a tiny little speck and all of the people who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture which is not scriptural okay it's not scriptural you can uh, take scriptures and then you can write between the lines and and say a whole bunch of nice things and have a big bunch of letters after your name and and uh, say a bunch of nice stuff that you're not going to have to go through suffering or tribulation or you know and they love to throw this one out there we're not destined for God's wrath we're not appointed unto wrath well the scripture tells us we're not appointed unto wrath okay but the fact remains that people act like they're going to be raptured out of here before the quote great tribulation that the scripture does not mention does it, it talks about a time of great tribulation on the earth but it never says it's a seven year duration. It never says it's a three and a half year duration. People take day for a year, a year for a day. Well, then I can throw out to you, uh, the Bible also says that a day with the Lord is as a thousand years. So 1,260 days times a thousand is how many years? One million, one hundred and two hundred, whatever thousand years. You know, so. You, you can write the, you can write whatever you want to in the scriptures and make it say whatever you want it to say. But I ask you, do you believe the scripture? Do you believe what the scripture says? Okay? Because if you don't believe what the scripture says, you're believing something other than the scripture. And most people who, who believe in these teachings that you can't back up with the scripture, they're believing lies. You're believing a lie. It's just like telling a lie. I mean, Eve believed the lie of the devil. And then she took of the fruit. She was disobedient. You know, September 29th, everybody's looking for the rapture. A lot of you people, you're just you're saying the rapture's going to happen, the rapture. It's not going to happen on September the 29th. And you're all going to look like fools because that's what you are. You're fools. You're believing something that's not going to happen on the 29th. Jesus said he's coming in an hour when you think not. And all you people think he's coming at that time. You think he's coming on the Feast of Trumpets. You say he's coming on Tabernacles. You say he's coming on this day or that day. And only the Father knows when he's coming. He's coming when he, gets, when he, when he comes. You'll see him. You'll know him. Hallelujah. But the scripture speaks of resurrection, okay? The word resurrection, it's in the Bible 41 times. 
only in the New Testament. It's not, it's not in the Old Testament, the word resurrection. And two times, okay, 39 times it's number 386 in the Strong's. Okay, and that number, 386 in the Strong's, here's what it means, okay? A standing up again. That is literally a resurrection from death bracket it's got a bracket there individual general or by implication its author or figuratively a moral recovery of spiritual truth raised to life again resurrection rise from the dead that should rise rising again okay this is what that word means in the Greek okay it's like a moral recovery all right of spiritual truth you see Jesus Christ said in John chapter 11 he said I am the resurrection and the life hallelujah that's what he said so when you receive Jesus Christ into your heart as a born-again believer from heaven born anew with a new nature you receive the resurrection and the life hallelujah the life that is Christ is resurrection life. But that life is only good for us as we die. As the old man gets out of the way. Okay? Now, we hear people take 1 Corinthians 15, and they take 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, alright? And they talk about the second coming of Christ and the rapture of the church, alright? And when you read the scripture you know for a fact what the scripture is saying is the truth it's the truth the scripture is the truth hallelujah oh praise God let's go over here Revel the 1 Corinthians chapter 15 okay and it says right here I believe it's verse 50 51 start at verse 50 now this I say brethren that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God neither doth corruption inherit incorruption behold I show you a mystery we shall not all sleep this is a mystery that word mystery is mysterion in the Greek it means to shut the mouth it means you can't explain it it's a mystery we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Hallelujah. Now, the word last there, let's look that up. What does that mean? It means, it means in the sense of con contiguity, farthest, final, of place or time, ends of, last, latter end, lowest, uttermost, the end, the last trump. Okay? Now, John Hagee came out with a teaching way back in the 80s or 90s. They, they started studying... Jewish tradition about the trumpets and about the marriage feast of the Jewish people and how the trumpets work and so they've taken this teaching and they've put it into the Bible into the scripture at these points of scripture and they say there's going to be two sets of trumpets and two second comings of Christ and the Bible does not teach this okay the scripture doesn't teach it men teach it they take once one verse here okay and then they write into it all this stuff of tradition and people buy into it because people do not want to suffer they're afraid to suffer with Christ this is the truth okay this is what it boils down to people do not want to to suffer for the sake of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
the one who died on the cross and redeemed them okay from the curse redeemed them from sin redeemed them from hell and this is what it boils down to you don't want to suffer you those of you who believe in a pre-tribulation rapture you have got no scripture to back up your belief none it is a false belief it is a false hope you are believing falsely and I've asked many of you bring me the scripture and so what do you do you bring me these scriptures from uh, the, the book of Romans you know chapter 11 chapter 9 talking about Israel and Israel can't do this and this can't happen here and that can and you're, you're trying to bring all these scriptures to bear to prove to me scriptures that have nothing to do with the second coming of Christ nothing to do with the resurrection from the dead getting back to that resurrection now okay there's two times in the Bible that resurrection that word I'm going to come back to this in in uh, 1 Corinthians but we're going to go over to uh, 1 Thessalonians 4 to get to the next part of this but I'm going to first go over to Philippians chapter 3 okay and I'm going to show you I want you to look at this you, this is a Bible study okay so if you don't like the Bible turn it off alright just turn it off and go somewhere else alright if you love the Bible you love the scripture stay with it you'll learn something if you receive it hallelujah Paul's talking here and many of you I'm talking to you've been reading the Bible years and years and years and years okay many years you've been following the scripture you've been reading the Bible but you hold it on to a false belief a false hope okay the rapture of the church will take place when Jesus comes back and does away with this earth hallelujah and does away with the heaven that we see with our temporal eyes now See? Hallelujah. We're going to be raised a spiritual body. We're going to have a flesh and bone body just like Jesus Christ has. Hallelujah. You're not going to measure time. You're not going to measure time after this world is done away with. Paul's talking here in, in Philippians 3. He says, verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That resurrection is the one I gave you the definition for, 386. The power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings. That is what Paul wanted to know. He wanted to know Him in the power of His resurrection and in the fellowship of His sufferings. And many of you, you don't want to know Jesus in the fellowship of His sufferings. No, you want to escape the suffering. And you're even preaching that you're going to escape the suffering. You're preaching contrary to the Word of God. Can you see that? Can you see that? Now you might say, well that was for the Philippians back then, John. Okay, well I could say the whole Bible was for those people back then, the people that wrote it. And none of it applies to us today. You see? But you say, no, 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 no. The, the part about Jesus dying for my sins, that's for me today. But not this part about fellowshipping in the sufferings. Now you can't pick or choose. Okay. Many of you, 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 you just, you just don't believe. You really not believe in the scripture. Believe the scripture. The fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Now. That word resurrection, this is verse 10 and 11 of Philippians 3. You can go look it up. That word resurrection is a, it's one of the, okay, 41 times in the New Testament resurrection is mentioned. 39 times it's number 386 in the strong. And one time it's 1815 right here in Philippians 3 verse 11. Okay, a rising from death resurrection. That's what it means. A rising from death. You see how short that is as opposed to this definition? A standing up again. That is literally a resurrection from death, individual, general, or by implication, its author, or figuratively a moral recovery of spiritual truth, raised to life again, resurrection, rise from the dead, that should rise, rising again. You see? 
So, clearly, from this scripture, we understand that the word resurrection there, Paul's talking about a moral recovery of spiritual truth. He's, he's talking about being filled with that resurrection life and power of Christ, that Christ is within him. And then, verse 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection the, the physical resurrection when his body comes out of the ground hallelujah of the dead okay see when you study these things out you find out what the truth is of the scripture just like second Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 through 12 you study that out look up those words people take when it says man they, they that's a man that's a male it's not that's not the word in the Greek the word is humankind okay you look it up do some study let the Lord show you we don't have all the answers okay as people the Bible has the answers the scripture reveals the truth and the Holy Spirit will quicken to you and give you revelation and understanding as you read it and study it and pray it hallelujah okay one thing we know for sure, Jesus Christ said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. See? Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. So, till the end of the age, he's with us always, till the end of the age. Hallelujah. It might be the end of your age. You know, our fathers, uh, my father died in 1975, my mother died in 1989, okay? Uh, my papa died in 1970. My meemaw died in 1971 or 72. All right. So our fathers are pretty much, you know, there. There's not very many people left who are who fathered the beginning of the baby boom generation. You understand what I'm saying? So these people are dying and going into the ground. They're going to sleep. All right. Into the ground. Their bodies are going into the ground. Their spirit, their souls going where it was destined to go, whether they were saved or, or not. Okay? So the end of the age came for those people, didn't it? It sure did. That was the end of their age. See? You think about the millions and billions of people that have been born and lived and died in this world since, since time began. Okay? Well, to our Father, it's all at the same time. See, God is every when at once. God can be every place at the same time, at all at the same time. I mean, every year, every minute, every second, He sees it all at the same time. He's Almighty God. We happen to be in a time realm. I don't want to get you confused, but, but I understand it a little bit. I mean, He's just awesome. Okay? I mean, think about it right now, whatever time you're watching this video. Okay? It's... 1.49 a.m. here. Whatever time you're watching this video, God sees and knows and hears every single thought of every single person on the face of the earth. All at the same time. And can register it. And it can even count the thoughts. And you know what he says to you, saint? You who love him? He says the thoughts that he thinks about you are more numerous than the sand. Now you think about how many thoughts that is. If you could count all the sand and all the beaches of the whole earth, and then God says the thoughts He thinks about us are more numerous than that sand. Every individual. I mean, find the number of the sand and then times it times the number of people. I mean, all at the same time and Father's thinking about us. He loves us. He wants us to know His truth. He wants you to know that, that you don't have to fear man. What man can do. What the New World Order can do. What the devil can do. Don't fear all that. That's of the devil. The fearful and the unbelieving. Okay. And the liar and the abominable and the murderer. These people are going to the lake of fire. If you're afraid of going through tribulation. And you're, you're fearful. You're fearful. Plain and simple. If you're afraid to fellowship in the sufferings being made conformable unto his death, okay, then you're afraid, you're fearful, and if you remain in that state, you're going to the lake of fire. That's what the scripture says. Because the fearful and the unbelieving are going to the lake of fire. 
Now, the Lord knows when we're uh, being timid about something, we don't understand something, okay? But to be afraid to suffer for the sake of the name, what a sin, huh? What a sin. Because Paul wasn't afraid, Peter wasn't afraid, John wasn't afraid, James wasn't afraid. All the saints down through history who've been martyred, and many saints who, who lived a full life in prayer and supplication like George Mueller. George Mueller lived a full life, a rich life, bore much fruit for the Lord in his own life. I, I got holy bumps. And, and his, he was a martyr as well. Because George Mueller gave up his whole... George Mueller could have been richer than the Rothschilds. He was such a brilliant man, but he gave it all to God, see? He gave his whole life to God, and he proved to the world in the modern age that God is a praying all hearing okay God he hears prayer and he answers and Mueller is a blessed saint okay he's a man we can look at his life and we can say yeah I can pattern my life like that I can pray like that I can say yes Lord I believe you I trust you see hallelujah and Mueller he was one he didn't believe in a pre-tribulation rapture George Mueller because George Mueller knew what the scripture says. And George Mueller, they found him one morning just laying on the floor. He went on to glory. He just, it was that simple. He just got up out of bed, took one or two steps, and Jesus took him home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he never had a, I don't think he ever feared anything. There might have been times in his life when fear attacked him, but he shrugged it off because he knew what the scripture said. That our daddy is the father of the fatherless, of the orphan, of the widow. Hallelujah. And he's the helper of the poor. Hallelujah. See? And that's why the scripture is so wonderful and so valuable for the believer. Any person who says not to read the scripture is a liar sent from the devil. A false apostle. There's just no doubt about it. So that second word, resurrection, is a rising from death resurrection. Now... The other place where that's mentioned is in the book of Matthew, chapter 27. It says, this is after Jesus was crucified. And you go down and, and it says, uh, it's starting around verse, uh, let's see. Oh, praise God. Oh, no, it's up here. Because there was the earthquake. I remember now. Praise the Lord. When Jesus died, it says, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Okay, verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man called for Elijah. He called for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elijah, Elias, will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. Very interesting, huh? Very interesting. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. And came out of the graves after his resurrection. Now, in Philippians, it's 18, I believe, 39, or something like that, the number on resurrection. Here, it's 1454. But this is another word, Greek word. Okay? So let me explain that to you again. 39 times in the New Testament, 
resurrection the word is number 386 in the Strong's one time it's a different number and I'll get you that number let me get that number this is real quick so you can write it down it's a uh, hallelujah it's number 1815 okay in Philippians 1815 in Matthew 27 55 I believe I was just there I hope I can remember the number okay it's verse 53 resurrection is 1454 and this word means a resurgence from death resurrection a resurgence from death resurrection Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, why is this word different in the Greek? Hmm, very interesting, huh? But this word in Matthew 27, 53 and Philippians chapter 3, okay, are talking about resurrection of the body. Okay. Of the body. Now, let's go over to 1st Thessalonians chapter 4 and we'll look at another popular uh, verse and it's you know it's popular with the rapture believers they're going to be raptured out before the great tribulation that's not even mentioned in the Bible praise God uh, and, and you people that are mocking you're going to find out you're going to find out see God's grinding wheel grinds very slow you know God can he can take care of the wicked fast, or he can take care of them slow. It's up to him. Alright? Now we know Jesus said that he's going to cut the time short, because if he didn't, there would no flesh survive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise you, Jesus. Now, he says here, But I would not have you, starting in verse 13, chapter 4, 1 Thessalonians, to be ignorant, brethren, to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, okay, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Hallelujah. Who is Paul writing to here? Paul is writing to the believers. Hallelujah. Who was John writing to? In, in the Gospel of John, chapter 5, John's writing to believers. But it's the gospel message, and it's more general to the whole world. Okay? And Jesus is speaking in John 5. We'll go over there, too. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up, hallelujah, together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord. You see how wonderful that is? Now, what men have done is they've come in and said this is the rapture of the church before the great tribulation they throw all the great tribulation in there they throw the antichrist in there they throw the, the traditions of the Jewish wedding in there they, they do all this stuff okay, with a shout with the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and they say what the trumpets mean and they give you all this stuff you know, and, and they're, they're putting it in between the lines 
and you're believing it. It's a lie. Do you want a fellowship in the sufferings so that you might attain unto the resurrection of the dead? No, no, many of you don't. You're hoping to be out of here. Boy, that would clear all your debt, wouldn't it? Praise God. You see? Hallelujah. You know, if Jesus comes on September the 29th, you don't have to worry about paying your bills no more. Praise the Lord. Huh? Praise God. You're, you're hoping. You're praying. Why? But you don't want to suffer with Christ? You don't want to suffer for the sake of the name? How many of you out there are truly suffering for the sake of the name? How many of you have given up all to follow the Lord? You know, how many? There's not many in the Western world. Not many. Not at all. Now I'm going to take you over to John chapter 5. And we'll get into some more of this. Because there's, there's so many. I mean, I could praise the Lord. Maybe I will. Just praise you, Jesus. Chapter 5 of John. It says, uh, Oh, thank you, Father. Verse 25, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The hour is coming, Jesus is talking, And now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. Oh, isn't that beautiful? When the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God. And they that hear shall live. What's he talking about there? He's talking about those who are walking around the earth today who are spiritually dead. Okay? And as we preach the gospel as believers, they might hear the voice of the Son of God in their spirit. Okay? And, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath given him, oh hallelujah, and hath given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the son of man marvel not at this for the hour is coming Jesus said Jesus speak for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice all he didn't say only the believers who are in the grave he said all who are in the graves. Hallelujah. All that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. Okay? Now the word resurrection there the first word is 386 and the second word is 386 resurrection and you can see from the definition it's a standing up again literally a resurrection from death individual general or by implication its author or figuratively a moral recovery of spiritual truth raised to life again resurrection rise from the dead that should rise rising again so this is the Greek word the Holy Spirit used hallelujah in, in these two verses talking about the resurrection hallelujah this is when every see when Jesus comes back everyone that's in the ground is going to come out everyone not just the believers but everyone and you say no wait a minute John that they're not raised the dead, the dead who don't believe are not raised till after the thousand year reign oh really oh really huh is that true is that a true statement what you're saying there? Not according to the scriptures. Okay, I hope I'm throwing a cog in your wheel. I hope I'm just throwing that cog in your wheel and put the brakes on you so that you can study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? If I'm wrong, you can show me I'm wrong from the scripture. But you're not going to come to me and show me I'm wrong because I'm not wrong. Okay? And I can stand here and tell you that with all truth and all my heart humble before the Lord knowing I'm not wrong and God knows my heart if I'm wrong if I'm interpreting wrong he'll show me and he might use one of you to show me 
and boy I'll be the first one to say I'm sorry and repent I guarantee you because I love God and I love his word but I'm telling you right now I've studied it out now go over to Revelation chapter 1 and I'll show you what I'm talking about okay in Revelation 1 so you have to have many witnesses in the word you have to have at least two or three witnesses to establish a truth you don't have one witness in the word to show me a seven year tribulation not one not even one you don't even have one witness in the word to show me a thousand year reign on earth not one and I'm sitting here showing you over and over again now I'm getting into more of the resurrection here this is what this is about the resurrection from the dead okay because when, when the rapture takes place oh the rapture's coming the rapture's coming that means all who are in the graves Paul's writing to the saints all the believers are going to come out of the grave first Paul's talking to believers and you which are alive I'm sitting at the computer if it happens in three minutes I'm gone see praise God praise the Lord see I lose nothing by by believing the truth nothing because I know there's going to be a rapture all right and I know when it's going to happen when Jesus comes back hallelujah hallelujah and he's only coming back one time. Oh, let's get to that first before we go to Revelation, okay? Go to the book of Acts, chapter 1. See? The book of Acts, chapter 1. This is what the word of the Lord speaks. This is what the scripture says. You know, you, 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 you don't want to listen to the scripture? And when he had spoken these things, verse 9, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And, and they're just standing there looking up. Jesus is gone flesh and bone body gone heaven father's right hand and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up behold two men stood by them in white apparel which also said ye men of Galilee ye men of Galilee why stand ye here why stand ye gazing into heaven this same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Now where were they at at this time? On the Mount of Olives. Okay. They were on the Mount of Olives. So these, these two men who appeared to them told them that Jesus, the same way you saw him go up, is coming down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See? In, Re in Zechariah 14, and then we'll get over to Revelation. Hallelujah. Zechariah chapter 14. It says that he's going to come. Oh, hallelujah. Then shall the Lord go forth, verse 3, and fight against those nations. Hallelujah. And as when he fought in the day of battle, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem. Hallelujah. You see, on the east. Hallelujah. Which is before Jerusalem. On the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst of thereof toward the east and toward the west hallelujah it's going to be a great earthquake when he comes back he's going to set his foot on the Mount of Olives hallelujah See? praise his holy name he's not coming back secretly that's, that's a lie that's the devil's work man grow up in your spirituality man get with the truth of the word of God the apostles would laugh you to scorn okay the apostles would be, be looking at you shaking their head going no you don't even get it you don't even have any understanding. Okay? Now I know many of you that believe in the rapture before the tribulation. I really believe you love God. I really do. I believe you love the Lord. Okay? But you're wrong on this one. You're just wrong. And if you don't change, you're going to find out and it could hurt you. That's why I tell you these things. Praise the Lord. I don't want you to be hurt. Hallelujah. I want you to be strengthened in the Lord and the power of His might. Revelation chapter 1. It says, now, we read John 5, verse uh, 28 and 29, talking about the resurrection. All who are in the graves are going to come forth. Now, look at this. And I don't care. You can try to interpret that whatever you want. I believe it says all, and I, I believe it means all. Don't you? Some under the resurrection of life, and some under the resurrection of damnation. Okay? At the same time, they're coming out. Hallelujah. And then you can take that right over right to the throne I mean you can take it right over to Matthew 25 starting at verse 31 okay and just follow right on through where he separates the sheep and the goats 
I love it. Oh no, wait, wait, wait. Hey, that's just for the Jews, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm. Where did they cut off? I think they cut it off in Matthew 24, verse 14 or something. They said, okay, from this verse in Matthew 24 on to the end of Matthew 25 is for the Jews. Okay. And then the Christian will pick up back in 26. Is, is that right? Is that how the teaching goes? Is, isn't that ignorant? That's so stupid, isn't it? But that's what many of you believe. Okay? Stupidity. All right, look at here. It says here, uh, Hallelujah. Behold, verse 7, He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see Him. And they also which pierced Him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of Him. Even so, Amen. So, behold, He cometh with clouds, he went up in a cloud. He's coming back in a cloud. And every eye see, shall see him. Caiaphas, right? Ananias, Ananus, or the high priest, you know, of that day. Pilate, Herod, right? The people who were screaming, crucify him. He's coming with clouds. Every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him. He's coming with clouds. Every eye. Your eye and my eye. My wife's eye. Everybody's eye is going to see him when he comes. There is no doubt about it. Do you want a fellowship in the sufferings of Christ? Or do you want to escape the fellowship of the sufferings? You want to escape the sufferings. And you will have no part in the glory. If your heart is bent on escaping the sufferings. And now I'm not talking about going out and being one of these ascetics like these monks that used to be in the Catholic Church. Maybe they still are. And they used to beat themselves, you know, with whips and stuff. Trying to, you know, beat the flesh out of themselves. That, that's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the taking up your cross and following Him. The sacrifices that He calls you to make in your life and in your walk. The things that hurt. Are you willing to drink that cup with Him in the fellowship of His sufferings for the sake of His body, the church? For the sake of His great name and His glory? Or do you want to just escape all that? You see Many of you want to escape it. Can you imagine? The, can, I, I just cannot even imagine the level of arrogance and pride in people that live their whole life in relative luxury. Okay? And then just really believe that they're just going to be whisked out of here without any suffering. With very little suffering. It's just arrogance. And it's absolute vanity. Because the church has suffered. Throughout the ages, the church has suffered. And the church is people. It's not a building, it's people. And I'm telling you, the sorrows are increasing. They're going to increase more and more. And we have to have the mentality, the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, thought it not robbery, to be equal with God. But he emptied himself. He emptied himself. Are we emptying ourselves today? We better be. Because Jesus is coming back. And before he comes back, he's going to sweep this earth of all the evil. Hallelujah. It's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, and we'll leave you with that. We'll go over to Second Peter, and I'll remind you, okay, you have to be reminded many, many times Peter even said that himself, you know, in chapter 3 of Second Peter. He said, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. See, he said, remember. That's what he wrote this for. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. How many people, amen, John, praise the Lord, amen. 
knowing this first that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust and saying where is the promise of his coming for since the fathers fell asleep all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation for this they willingly are ignorant of that by the word of God hallelujah the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perish but the heavens and the earth the heavens and the earth okay which are now by the same word which is God's word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men okay now let's stop right there we'll go a little deeper do you like to go deep I do I love it let's go deeper okay this is reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men Hallelujah. now as Christians we are possessing and are possessed by hallelujah the Lord Jesus Christ hallelujah see he apprehends us he possesses us hallelujah. the world is possessed by the devil the world is possessed by their own flesh okay but Christians were supposed to be and we are in this house possessed by the Lord himself hallelujah, by the Holy Ghost oh praise God Praise God. Now, if you go over to, uh, let's go over there real quick. Praise God. Because talking about this fire, you see, and here's a scripture from the Old Testament. Oh, praise God. Isaiah chapter 43. Oh, praise the Lord. And it says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Many of you, you're all afraid. You're afraid. Oh, I hope I don't miss the rapture. Oh, you're afraid of this. You're afraid of that. You know, I got to show you this nuisance that keeps coming around here. This is the nuisance. Okay, goodbye. Fear not, God says, for I have redeemed thee. I have nothing to fear, Lord. You redeem me. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Oh, wow. See, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. Oh, I happen to know it, didn't it? Huh? Noah passed through the waters. Many of us are passing through waters today. And God is with us. And through the rivers. They shall not overflow thee. Yeah, the rivers. Yeah. They, they flow through your life sometimes, don't they? But they're not going to overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire. Hallelujah. Thou shalt not be burned. Oh, hallelujah. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. God's talking to his people. Okay, are you one of his? The flame's not going to kindle upon you. Hallelujah. Look at Go back to uh, 2 Peter 3. Hallelujah. Oh, I just love the Word of God. Oh, hallelujah. Okay, it's the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing many people are ignorant today Peter saying don't be ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is one day and that gets back to what I was saying earlier you get over to Revelation chapter 12 and 13 you know it talks about the 42 months and the 1260 days okay well we say we, we, we say okay the 1260 days are 1260 years because a year for a day it says in uh, Ezekiel or a year for a day it says in um, the book of Numbers right. you, you follow my logic here this is how people interpret the Bible well the Bible does say God said you're going to be in the wilderness for a day for a year for a day okay that, that's right that's what happened back then All right. but right here it says a, a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like a day so if a day in the scripture means a thousand years 
let's say it's, it's that group of days, 1260 days, that's one million, right? 260,000 years. Okay, so we're all going to die. Okay, we're going to the ground. Do you want to suffer for Christ? Do you want to suffer with Christ so that you can be glorified together? See, time is irrelevant. It really is. In God's kingdom, time is irrelevant. We're here for the duration until he says, come up hither. Okay? And he's going to say that one day to all of us. Come up hither. He's going to use, we're going to, we're here. Whoa! You know? David Wilkerson was driving down the highway, just him and his wife cruising down the road. You know? He might have been talking to her when he hit that bridge and maybe there was a little dip and he just went over a little bit in the other lane and bammo, he was in heaven. You see? Just, I mean, that quick. He was taken to heaven. None of us know the day or the hour. Could that be what that scripture means? Absolutely, that's what it means. And it also means other things. Because the scripture is rich. Okay? You don't know the hour you're going to take your last breath. I don't know the hour I'm going to take mine. Hallelujah. Think about it. Now look what Peter says. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness. No. But is long suffering to us were. Not willing that any should perish. Hallelujah. But that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth, the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Okay? Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation in God? Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. The heavens being on fire shall be dissolved. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat. He's asking a question. We should be holy. We're only holy when we're in Christ. And we're doing what he says to do. Hallelujah. I love verse 13. Nevertheless, we, I'm with Peter, okay? We, and the saints of old, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Okay? Wherein dwelleth righteousness. A new heaven and a new earth. Don't have your teaching wrong. Don't have your understanding wrong. Get in the Word. Let the Lord show you these things. There's so much more I want to show you. And I'll do that in another video, okay? Uh, but I want you to be blessed. You think about I make this video to challenge you. Okay? You study it out. Stop listening to what John Hagee says or Kenneth Copeland or Hal Lindsey or all these people. Stop listening to them. Get with what the word of the Lord says and let God be your instructor. Let God be your teacher and stop looking at the persons of men. Okay? And I, that's all I'm going by is what the scripture says. Alright? Now many Protestants today, they say, oh, the traditions, no traditions, no traditions. You know, they really harp on the Catholics because they have a lot of tradition. Well, the traditions of the Catholic Church are from way back and, and they have their traditions and no, we're not to follow those sun worshipers, okay? We're not to follow all that tradition. But Paul said in Thessalonians that he laid down some tradition, okay? One tradition Paul laid down was, bring me the books, Timothy, okay? Especially the parchments, see? I want to, I mean, he taught that to the people. Study, see? Seek the Lord. Pray, okay? Be encouraged. Be strengthened, Lord. I pray you seal this word in the hearts of your people, Lord. I know there's many people, Lord, who have a question, have a doubt about this thing with the rapture. They don't understand it, Lord. But they're listening to men, many of them, Lord. I pray you get them into your word. Let them look up this word, resurrection. And even other words, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And I was going to say, even second coming. You can't find that in Scripture either. Hallelujah. You can find coming again, you know, 
but you hear a lot of talk about a lot of phrases that people say and they act like it's scriptural okay now we know Jesus is coming back again and he came one time before okay he came before that's true alright so we can call we can say it's his second coming but really if you look at it it's he's come more than once he he came once as a man born in a human body he appeared to Abraham as a man okay he appeared to Joshua as a man all right the angel captain of the host all right. so he's come in theophanies many times but only one time as a man and he's coming back again as the glorified man risen from the dead hallelujah hallelujah he's coming I'm telling you he's coming what a wonderful day that's going to be when our blessed Savior splits the eastern sky and we see him coming he loves his church so much he wants you to know that he loves you and he wants you to just say Lord make me what I need to be See, where I'm not afraid to suffer I'm not afraid to to, to, go, to go into hard times he wants to strengthen you and make you what he wants you to be after his image and his likeness in Jesus' name.